from his custom built studio in the Seattle area is former BYU and NFL quarterback Jake Heaps. Jake, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. How are things? Hey, doing great. Thanks for having me on, guys. We're going to need you to come spruce up our studio when you get a free minute. Is that okay? Uh, you, you guys got a sweet setup right now. <laughs> I, right now, I'm here. In, in COVID, you know, everybody's become a, you know, master of DIY, uh, DIY projects, you know, and, and uh, DIY projects. And, and I looked at my shed and I was doing my shows in, from my laundry room. And so I finally looked at it and said, you know what, I got to turn this thing into a studio. So uh, it was a fun little project to do while I was bored out of my mind. A very impressive stuff. Um, and obviously you have a unique perspective based on your location you're a big radio personality in the Puget, uh, Puget Sound uh, area up there. What's the take from Washington on this whole situation with BYU of who wants to smoke, who doesn't want to smoke, there's a game on, there's a game off. How have you perceived all of this? Well, my perception has been very different from everyone up here in the Northwest. I mean, I think, you know, unfortunately for BYU, this was one of those situations where, you know, you – what you say and what ends up happening are two different things. And, you know, when you come out boldly and proclaim anytime, anywhere, any place, and you have somebody that calls you the next day that says, okay, we'll take you up on that offer. And you say, eh, I don't think so. You're going to get, you're going to get a razzing from everyone around the country. You know, those, those are bold statements, but the reality of the situation is not what is perception. Right. And, and I think that's the biggest thing in this is that, you know, with BYU in this situation, why would you commit to playing a team? And let's be honest, the Pac-12 as a whole is far behind every single other conference, every single other college football program in America right now that is playing college football. Um, they were late to the party. They were late to, you know, getting themselves to playing. And now they're in a situation where they're having a hard time with, with COVID and COVID protocols and getting games. So, BYU in this situation, they didn't need this game as badly as UW. Sure, it would have been nice to, to have it on their resume, no question. But UW is the, is the team that needed this game more. They're the ones that have only played two games up to this season, whereas BYU has played nine. And for, for UW and the Pac-12 to come to BYU and put down all these stipulations and say, this is, these are the terms of agreement, you better accept it or we, we won't play you, I think to me was – was garbage from the beginning. And Tom Homo was absolutely right in the way that he handled this. And it's not necessarily great from a PR standpoint initially, but uh, BYU did the right thing. And ultimately, I think BYU is going to get a better game out of it than, than uh, the matchup at UW. And, and I'm, hey, I wanted this matchup more than anybody between BYU and UW would have been a great one. It would have been fun. And obviously, uh, it, it's close to my heart. You know, Jake, one of the other reasons that BYU was was so cautious about this was they didn't want to commit and then have the game pulled because Washington was going to end up playing Utah, which certainly has, has a high probability of happening with the uncertainty with ASU. What are you hearing up there in terms of the, the potential of, even if BYU had agreed to do it, the University of Washington playing Utah this weekend? Yeah, it doesn't matter when it comes to trash talk, <laughs> Jason. Unfortunately, <laughs> when it comes to UW, they don't want to hear any of that stuff. Don't throw logic out there. Logic <laughs> is irrelevant in this conversation. Don't. It, it, BYU is scared. They're running scared. They they don't want any part of UW. That's the that's the 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 conversation up here in the Northwest. And I have to quickly remind people that that just simply isn't the case. The, the, there are agreements in place that UW and the Pac-12 want BYU to agree to that just. Are ridiculous it doesn't make any sense whatsoever and BYU again want to reiterate again BYU would be doing UW more of the favor than the other way around as much as they want to play it off as we're the power five school we're the team that would help you build your resume um, that's just not simply the case and so to me it, you know BYU I'm glad that they didn't take this you know just rolling over um, I'm glad that it, you know, there was a report that came out last night that said that, hey, BYU actually made a counter offer. And it just went to go to show kind of the hypocrisy of what was actually out there that, you know, BYU put forth a, a, an opportunity for them to come to Provo, uh, for UW to come to Provo and for them to commit to the game, which in all honesty, guys, this isn't between program and program. This is really on the fault of the Pac-12. 
The Pac-12 is the one that muddied this up, and it's a Pac-12 rule that they have to be able to uh, leave themselves open to cancel games with non-conference opponents. Um, and, and so that is really the, the unfortunate aspect about this. And for BYU, I think they got their statement across saying, hey, we weren't afraid to play. We just weren't willing to go with these stipulations that, that were given to us. And quite honestly, the game that I'm hopeful that BYU can put together is Cincinnati next week. If BYU and Cincinnati can play next week, honestly, I think that might be the better game. And that's the bigger resume builder, obviously, with where those two teams are on the national rankings. Jake, when the when the weekend rolls around, do you think UW's taking on Utah? Do you think that's the game that actually happens? Abs absolutely. The, the situation that's going on at Arizona State, it's just, it's too unknown. And if they, guys, if they can't commit to the game now, there's very little confidence that I have that this game is going to come together. I mean, it's just common sense, right? And the, the situation that we have heard uh, reported from Arizona State and, and you know, some of my in information or contacts that I have within that program, it's just, it's, it's a disaster right now. They're really reeling and trying to figure it out and trying to, you know, get a handle on things. And it's been really tough for them. So I anticipate that BYU, or sorry, UW and Utah are most likely going to be playing this weekend. Former BYU and NFL quarterback Jake Heaps with us on BYU Sports Nation. Jake, let's talk about Zach Wilson, who is being projected as a first-round NFL draft pick. We've seen him as high as number three to the Washington football team. Mel Kuyper, Todd McShay have him around 13 to 16. Where do you see Zach Wilson transitioning into the NFL from a draft perspective when this season is over? Well, guys, I, I said from his freshman year, I had a chance to be around him and, and work with him a couple times, you know, from a training aspect and, and get to know him and his family and all that. And, and great kid, great people, um, his family. And it just really, really was impressed by him. The more and more I've been around the game and the more and more that I've been through this as a player and also now as a coach and, and working with some of the best guys in the country and working with Russell Wilson and, and all those guys, to me, one of the, the, the biggest common denominators for success is your mentality, your mental makeup. And Zach Wilson has that mental makeup to thrive at a high level, you know, through adversity, through success. He's just got what it takes. And Zach, it, you know, I always knew and, and said outwardly that I thought that he was a first round talent since his freshman year. Um, it's been great to see this come together for him. It's been great to see Kalani Sataki, you know, and this offensive staff really grow Zach Wilson and really develop his game. And that's been something that's really been a joy for me to watch over the years. It hasn't been an easy ride, guys. I mean, you know, Zach hasn't played clean football throughout his entire career, but they stuck with him. They allowed him to continue to mature and grow. And uh, you see him playing at the level that he is now. And he's got everything that it takes to play at a high level at the NFL level. So, guys, my my hope and my dream for Zach Wilson is not to go to the Washington football team, but to have him be selected by Kyle Shanahan and the San Francisco 49ers. Mm. I think that that would be an amazing situation and setup for him. And you, you talk, I, you know, I've talked to a lot of different people that I really trust at the NFL level in terms of coaches, evaluators, and all that with Zach Wilson. You know, right now he's in the third or fourth spot. And the third or fourth spot, this is a really good quarterback class. Um, and you're going to see, you know, potentially four quarterbacks taken in the top 15 this year. And uh, I, I expect Zach Wilson to be right in the mix of that. Jake, it's great to catch up with you. You're a choice human being, a great football mind. Let's do this again soon. Hey, anytime, guys. Just let me know.